All right, so today we're going to talk about nonfiction and kind of do a drive-by of the features of the nonfiction genre. So nonfiction essentially is anything um, that's written or spoken that is dealing with real people, uh, places, and events. Informational writing um, is a big one, but it could also be an argument. Um, it could be biography, blogs, reviews, uh, letters, magazine articles, newspaper articles, and websites. Um, I don't know about you, but when I was your age, when I heard the word nonfiction, I always thought about um, a boring textbook, like my biology textbook or my um, history textbook. And I thought that all nonfiction had to be like really dry and strictly just giving um, me information about things that I don't care about. But that's not true. A lot of the most um, exciting writing out there is nonfiction. Um, and so hopefully you're going to get to read some things that you enjoy this year that are nonfiction. But essentially, it's all uh, writing that is about true people, places, or events. Okay, so one of the first things you got to kind of think about when you're reading nonfiction is these three things. Uh, who is the audience? What is the message of the writer? And what is that writer or author's purpose? So the audience is the people or listeners of the text or speech. Now, that can get a little bit confusing because... Um, there's might be an intended audience or a primary audience or like the audience that the writer was thinking of. And then there might be um, a secondary audience or somebody who um, is reading this or watching this that the writer didn't necessarily intend for them to read, but they, they wanted to read it just for fun or for in your case, it, it was assigned to you, right? So if you're reading something like, let's say um, the top 20 episodes of Game of Thrones, and you've never seen Game of Thrones, and you've never, uh, you have no interest in the show at all, and you're reading this article about it, you may not find it interesting, and you may not know a lot of the things that they're referencing in the article just because that's not your taste. You're not the intended audience, right? So if you uh, find yourself um, disengaged with an article, or if you find yourself having trouble understanding all of the content in there, if there's like, well, there's details and specifics in here that I don't really know about. You want to ask yourself, um, am I the intended audience? Um, so, and, and if you are the intended audience, then maybe the writer uh, didn't do as great job as, as they could have of, uh, of explaining what they want you to understand. So audience matters. Um, hopefully you're going to read uh, or watch some things in this class you wouldn't have picked on your own and find some new interests and new hobbies. Um, but just have that in the back of your mind when you're thinking about audience that you may not be the... Uh, the intended audience that the writer was envisioning when they wrote this. All right, the message simply is what the author wants you to take away from the text. Like, what do they want you to know after reading this text or understand? And then author's purposes. Authors write for a lot of different purposes. Um, and many times they blend these different pur uh, purposes together. These over here um, on the left are kind of usually more informational, but not always. And these over here are usually more um, argumentative. Definitely, you know, take a stand, um, see common ground, evaluate and judge. But these can kind of go back and forth um, throughout a text or, or something that you're listening to or watching. So um, if you think about express and reflect, the um, the writer might be thinking about something in their life or it might be a really complicated issue um, going on and they don't necessarily have all the answers. Um, same with inquire and explore, but they're doing some writing to get through some of those or try to get to some of those answers. They may not get there, but they're working towards that by thinking through some things, um, especially the writing about their life. They might be uh, reflecting or expressing how a, a certain event in their life uh, shaped who they are. And so, um, you know, th this kind of writing is definitely informational and it's usually about a, a topic that's really complex or um, there's not a lot of answers out. Like if I wrote about myself, uh, me and maybe the people in the, in the event have memories about that, but no one else, uh, I can't go to another source to get information. Whereas something like, um, <clears throat> something like um, how to change a tire on a bike, you can go to many sources on how to do that. And maybe you know how to do that yourself, but you can also look that up on YouTube and read a lot of articles about that, right? Um, okay. You probably think of an argument as um, something you want to win and show that the other person's wrong, but there's a lot of different things you could also do in an argument. You might take a stand. You might say, this is the line. I am uh, definitely saying that Las Palapas is the best Tex-Mex place in, in San Antonio. 
I don't necessarily agree with that. I'm just saying, uh, throwing out there as an example. Or you might evaluate and judge and say, of these three places, uh, Las Palapas and Taco Cabana and um, Taco Bell, Las Palapas is the best, right? You might propose a solution to something. You might say that, um, that I know that it's a big problem um, having a shortage right now in certain kinds of food supplies. And so instead of eating takeout, we're going to get some stuff from HEB instead. Seek common ground. So seeking common ground is probably kind of strange to you, but you may not be able to win an argument full hand. You may not be able to convince me that Las Palapas is the best, but maybe we can agree that Las Palapas and Taco Bell are really good um, options because they are uh, all over the city instead of something that's just really specific to a certain part of the city. So, so those are some examples of these and when you might use them. But you, once again, writers can go back and forth. They might start up uh, informing and explaining about a topic like um, Tex-Mex food. This is what Tex-Mex food is. And then we're going to evaluate and judge three restaurants like Las Palapas, Taco Bell, and, and Taco Cabana. So you could start one way and, and go to another. Um, but these are just kind of the purposes that artists, uh, writers write for. So think about that as you're reading nonfiction. Okay, organizational patterns in nonfiction. So, you know, some of the basic characteristics of nonfiction is you're going to have sentences and paragraphs. Um, you're going to have an introduction. You're going to have body paragraphs, and you're going to have a conclusion. And there's going to be a thesis statement somewhere in there, a thesis sentence. Um, a thesis statement might be more than one uh, more than one sentence, um, and it may be implied, which means that the author did not specifically write out the thesis. You have to read the whole piece to understand what his or her argument is. Um, but if it's shorter, if it's a shorter text, it's probably going to be um, one sentence, maybe two, and it's probably going to be explicitly there. Like you'll be able to like highlight or underline um, the the thesis statement in there. Um, another genre characteristic is how it's organized. And just like with purposes, these are the different um, patterns and a writer might use more than one to support their ideas or really help um, shape them in a way that makes sense to the reader. So it's compare and contrast, cause and effect, examples, classification, definition, problem, solution, and advantage and disadvantage. So you could <clears throat> start off with like compare and contrast, Taco Bell and um, Taco Vanna or Las Palapas and Taco Vanna or the advantages and disadvantages of both and then propose a solution to a problem that arises there like the problem with um, maybe Las Palapas is they don't they're not open all the time but Taco Cabana is or something like that um, cause and effect is probably you can talk about the cause and effect of something and then go into how you would solve that problem that is created by that effect with problem solution Classification sounds fancy, but it just means we're going to put things in categories. So restaurants is a big category, and we might say Tex-Mex restaurants, Chinese restaurants, uh, Italian restaurants, right? It's classifying these things, that's one way to do it. And then definition, which simply means we're going to define something like a Tex-Mex restaurant in our own terms rather than going to the dictionary or some outside source. And it really helps when you define something. Um, it helps make your argument tighter because you can say, this is how I'm going to define it. And when you're can, when you the one in charge of defining it, you're also um, more in charge of that argument. OK? And the last things that uh, are very common in nonfiction texts are these uh, other text features, <clears throat> um, which are headings, sections, subtopics, subheadings. So like uh, in a news article or a magazine article or in a textbook, you might have different sections and it might tell you, uh, give you more information about that um, particular paragraph or paragraphs to have a better idea of the information coming at you. There could be call outs or special print. You know, you might have a bold or unlined, underlined word in a text and that's because the reader really wants you to notice that word. You can have footnotes and a footnote set at the bottom of the page after like the paragraphs ended and it's separated by a little line. And it gives you just more information about the topic that maybe isn't essential to understanding the article. It's just extra information you might want to have. Hyperlinks serve the same way and they're kind of at least in a lot of, obviously, in digital text, they're replacing footnotes where you can click on the, the blue link and then it will take you to um, uh, a video or a different article or an image of that to help you better understand. Also, embedded videos and images um, 
you know, it would be really easy for you to compare uh, and contrast the um, difference between Las Palapas and Taco Vanna if I had a picture of both uh, fajita tacos, right, from both of them, right, or cheese enchiladas from both of them. You could really see them and say, okay, I can I can see why I would like this one versus this one based on the tortilla or how much meat's in there, or what uh, the cheese looks like on the enchilada, et cetera. So this is a really good way to shortcut to information that writers use, and that's why they have these things. Uh, captions, which goes under the picture, right, to kind of give you more information about what you're looking at. And then the reader comments and related articles. Reader comments can be helpful because you might see that a lot of people disagree with the writer or have points that counter the writer, and so that might um, cause the writer to lose some um, credibility. Or you could see that everyone agrees with the reader and you're like, okay, maybe this person is very credible and I should take them seriously. Um, and also related articles, uh, very common to have just extra information about the topic, um, somewhere linked or somewhere uh, afterwards to say, hey, if you, if you like this topic, we're going to go here um, and read more about it. Okay, so that's a quick drive-by of the nonfiction genre and its genre features. Um, and hopefully you guys read some nonfiction that you really like this year. Um, and then you find some new interests of yours going forward. And I hope this helps you uh, also with your um, assignments and work and learning of nonfiction genre.